this screencast, I'd like to talk about dummy variable regression. What is a dummy variable? A dummy variable is a variable for which all cases falling, in, falling into a specific category of that variable assume a value of 1, and all other cases not falling into that ca category assume a value of 0, sometimes called a binary variable. For example, think about the state data set. Suppose you're trying to explain turnout differences across states. And we think uh, whether a state was a, considered a battleground state is going to have a lot to do with that, in that uh, battleground states that might have higher turnouts than non-battleground states. We could define a dummy variable uh, such that the nine battleground states in 2012 would have a value of one on this variable, identifying them as battleground. And then the 41 other states that are non-battleground states would have a value of zero on this variable. Here's what the model would look like, a regression model with a dummy variable in it. A, or alpha, a hat, is going to be the mean turnout in non-battleground states. Well, why is that? Well, when battleground assumes a value of zero, a B hat battleground drops out, and you're left with Y hat equal A hat, or the mean turnout in non-battleground states. So in this, in this application, the, uh, the intercept of, of regressions and dummy variable regressions always has a lot of meaning because it captures, in this case, uh, the value for what's called the omitted category or the excluded category, non-battleground states. B hat is going to tell us the mean difference in the turnout between non-battleground and battleground states. So our, our hypothesis is suggesting we're going to find a significant positive uh, coefficient on B hat. It's important to emphasize that BHAT won't tell us the turnout in battleground states. It'll tell us the difference between non-battleground turnouts and battleground turnouts. Well, here's the estimates. Here are the estimates for the model. Uh, here's A, A hat up here, B hat. Let's look down at A hat. 58.48. That is the mean turnout in non-battleground states, for which the, the uh, variable, the dummy variable battleground is equal to zero. So again, this is called the excluded or omitted category, always captured by the intercept of the regression. 8.07, that's the mean difference in turnouts between non-battleground and battleground states. So if you switch from, you switch the dummy from zero to one, you increase turnouts by eight percentage points. And again, of course, this isn't the turnout in uh, battleground states. This tells us that uh, to derive mean turnouts in battleground states, we would add 58.48 and 8.07. So just a rough and ready uh, estimate, about 63% would be the mean turnout in uh, battleground states. Now, is it a significant effect? Just to, is it in any regression, we would look at the, t, the standard error, and we ask ourselves, well, is the coefficient at least twice its standard error? That's sort of a, a shortcut rule. And the answer is yes. The t-statistic here is 3.79, and it, it, turned, it returned a p-value of 0 .000. Uh, that means that, uh, uh, that if the null hypothesis is right, in which uh, there is no difference between battleground and non-battleground states, we would get that coefficient, 8.07, 0 percent of the time by chance, so we would reject the null hypothesis and say, yeah, turnout is significantly higher in battleground states. Just to interpret, the y-intercept tells us turnout in non-battleground states average about 58.48. The regression coefficients tells us turnout in battleground states was 8.07 points higher on average than turnout in non-battleground states. So in dummy variable regression, you're, you're, it's just another way of doing mean comparison analysis. Uh, and looking for statistically significant differences. The T stats, P value tell us this, turnout in battleground states was significantly higher than turnout in non-battleground states. Now, the dummy logic can be easily extended to variables that have more than two categories. Dummy variable regression can be extended to nominal, ordinal, independent variables with more than two values. Let's take another uh, uh, variable from the states example. Let's say we have a variable that measures region. It's called region and it has four categories, northeast, midwest, west, and south. So if you look at this nominal variable, it's got four values. 
How do we you how would we uh, uh, translate this into a dummy variable regression? The first rule is this: if a variable has k categories and a region has four, we're going to need k minus one dummies to capture the variable. Why? Because the intercept will pick up the excluded category. Let's illustrate this. Let's define these dummies. Let's define a dummy called Northeast. And all northeastern states will be coded 1 on northeast. States in all other regions will be coded 0. I'm going to define another dummy called Midwest. All Midwestern states are coded 1 on Midwest. All other regions, all other states in all other regions are coded 0. Again, South is also going to be a dummy. So we've got three dummies so far. In fact, that's all we're going to, all we're going to need. All southern states are coded 1 on South. All other states are coded 0. So the West does not appear in our list. Western states are the base or excluded, sometimes called the omitted category. Western states will be uniquely defined by values of 0 on all the other regional dummies. So we'll, we'll know Western states when we, when we see one because they'll have values of zeros uh, on Northeast, Midwest, and South. Here's the model. A hat will be the mean turnout in Western states. Again, just to, just to emphasize, Western states will have a value of zero on uh, Northeast, will have a value of zero on Midwest, and we'll have a value of zero on South. B1 is going to estimate the mean difference between northeastern states and western states. So again, we're, we're, we're starting with alpha, a hat, and we're adjusting that value up or down depending on uh, the value of, of the other coefficients. B2 will again be the mean difference between Midwestern states and Western states. So we've we're, we're, we got a base category and we're estimating how much to adjust that base turnout uh, based on these other regional dummies. And similarly in the South, uh, this, this value on B3 will tell us the mean difference between Southern states and Western states. Well here are the estimates for the model. Al alpha a hat is 58.24. That is going to be our estimate of turnout in, in Western states. Why? Because they're excluded category. A B1 says to adjust that up about 3.8 percentage points for Northeastern states. It's not a huge difference. In fact, if you read down some of the stats here, the standard error is 2.7. The t-statistic is pretty small and the and the p-value is very large. So we would, we would not reject the null hypothesis here. Uh, the null hypothesis says, look, there's no differences between the regions in turnout, and uh, the null hypothesis is on, is on sound statistical ground here in terms of the north. Things look better for the Midwestern coefficient. This is 5.16 uh, translation. Midwestern states on average uh, average is about five points higher than Western states in turnout. A standard error 2.5. We have a T statistic that's greater than 2. This is not a huge uh, p value 0 0.044. If the null hypothesis is correct, we would, we would get this coefficient about uh, 44 times out of 1,000. So we're going to reject the null hypothesis for the Midwest. Interestingly, traditionally the South has lower turnouts than the other regions, but this, this is telling us that the coefficient on South is really puny, minus 0.07. That's less than a percentage point difference between the South and the West. And there's a, a very large standard error, a very puny t-statistic, and we do not reject the null hypothesis for the South. Again, turnout rate states in the base category, which is the West, at 58.24, since, since A has 58.24. The coefficient for North, Northeast is 3.8. On average, the turnout rate for these states is 3.8 percentage points higher. The average in the Midwest is about five points higher, and southern states are really a, a less than a percentage point lower. To reiterate, the, the Midwest coefficient is the only statistically significant result.